Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show, your best friend in astronomy, science, and telescopes. I hope at least one of them. Anyway guys, today we have an 8-inch SCT on a, uh, I'm not going to say what mount because that video is coming very soon. But anyway, we're not testing what the scope is about or whatever. We are actually testing this, the Ruby turret on the SCT and we're going to see how I like it. Today is two days before the first quarter moon and we're going to test it out on that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, or I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to put six eyepieces in here and then, actually I'll just put it in now. There we go. The clicking feels pretty good. Now I have a uh, inch and a quarter visual back because the ruby turret is only inch and a quarter format so put that in tighten it down and uh, it does seem to work pretty good it's easy to switch to the next turret so why don't I just pause and we'll be back and I'll load up my six and I'll show you guys when, what I have when I come back. Okay guys, so this is how the eight inch is looking. And as you can see, I have six eyepieces in here, all inch and a quarter, cause that's all this fits. And so I got, let's say, first is a Mead super wide 24.5. This is the made the 4,000 series, not the 5,000 series. Then I'm going to an 18 millimeter super wide 4000 series. Then I'm hopping over to a Teleview 13 millimeter Nagler type six. Then I'm going to an SV Boney, a three to eight millimeter zoom, but I'm just gonna set it on the eight millimeter. I'm gonna go to the 4000 series ultra wide angle. This is Japan made again, 6.7 smoothie. And then to a 4.7, 4,000 millimeter. And there we go, there's six eyepieces. So I should be able to just go here. Now there's one more thing I actually wanted to tell you. These are par focal, meaning that I could look at, let's say, look at the moon up there, look at the moon. And then you could twist these, this part here. And it does come up about four or five millimeters. And then you can focus or parfocal it, focus this one, focus that one with this ring, focus, 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 focus. So you have to do all six, okay, until I get back to, oh, that's my low power, the 24.5, which isn't too low in a 2000 millimeter focal length. But anyway, so then you do that if you want them to be all parfocal, where you have, don't always have to focus and then you can start looking, but that's like you're doing it twice. So it's cause you're, you're focusing every, all six, and then you can start looking. Me, I don't, I don't know if I really care. I think I'm just gonna take a look and if I have to focus, go to the next one, if I have to focus a millimeter or two, I don't think I care that much, but I'll give it a try. And then I'll uh, tell you what I think. Okay, one more thing I wanna show you guys. So because of this turret, it's not super heavy, but has a, a little bit of weight to it. But also when you add six eyepieces and these are not even huge, I had to, it was so uh, mirror heavy or back heavy now that I had to literally put the Vixen bar. It's like really two millimeters and I can't go any higher. Almost balanced and I figure, okay, I'll just put the dew shield on it. And hopefully that uh, I think is now perfect. Yeah, so now it stays. But if I didn't put this practically all the way up and uh, put the dew shield on, you have to take that into consideration that it could put off balance, whatever it is, because you have six eyepieces and a turret, it's going to add up. 
So take that into consideration. Okay guys, so let's go inside and talk about this Ruby turret. I actually did parfocal all of them, except for the one, the zoom one didn't work. I didn't have to really focus at all. You just change to each eyepiece and it's already focused. Let's go inside and take a look at this or let's talk about this. Okay, there's one more thing I wanna to talk to you guys and explain is that how you know which part of the mirror is hitting which eyepiece to use. So when you look at this, you'll see there's a telescope. So straight up is the one you're looking at. So which means right now, this would be the one that it would be looking at. So, and if you click it, let's say I'm gonna hold the back, like it's attached to the telescope. And so the next one would be, then it'd be that one. See, so the telescope straight up would be that one, then it's that one. So if you have this guy backwards and um, see the telescope's upside down, you try looking here, well, the mirror is not facing that way. So it has to be this way. So you're looking, this way now it's this one now that one so on so that telescope has to be right side up or the way a telescope should be okay so let's talk about this i did do the par focal after off camera you know what you could do if you see the nagler i pulled it out uh like three millimeters and then i used this tuning uh turning thing and then uh, there, there you go, it's set. I was able to parfocal all of them and then after you can just change from one, change to the other. And you don't have to really focus at all. But I didn't really mind that much if I had to focus because doing that is gonna take a lot longer. Put in six eye pieces of stronger magnitude, the correct order, and then look at each one, uh, focus, then you either pull it out slightly or use this twisting tuner until it's focused, then you go to the next one. So you gotta do that six times. Uh, and But I guess whichever way you guys want. I, I, I didn't find a problem just looking through one, focusing, putting it to the next power, just giving it a little focus. Next power, little focus. Now what this does do is make you not have to go to your case or your table uh, with accessories and back and forth six times. Just load it up once, and then you could just focus how I did each one, which doesn't take that long, because normally you gotta do that anyway. But if you wanna switch within like half a second without focusing, you look through each one, put it where the focus is, next one to focus, once you do all that, then you can go back and forth all you want without needing to focus at all. So it's kinda neat, so normally for me that would save me six trips going back and forth, but I guess in the end, uh, you're, you're doing all that work at the beginning then not in the end. But maybe for people like me that takes videos, I don't have to keep cutting six times in six different powers as I keep getting closer. I can see how that can come in handy for some people that might like that. Now there's one thing that I did notice that I don't know if the mirror has an issue with it. I'm gonna get you guys closer. Not sure if you can see the mirror, but it kind of looks like it has a haze on it. Okay, like right there. So kind of looks like it has a haze or it's been etched. Now, I'm thinking, because this is a loner one, I'm not sure what happened. Something happened to the mirror, really the reflectivity. If you do want to clean this mirror, there's two screws here and there's two screws on over here and it opens like a butterfly. It opens up, then you can access the mirror and then there's a little nut holding it. You can unscrew it, clean it, put it back. You can access the mirror that way to clean it if this ever happens to you where it needs cleaning. I doubt um, there's any plastic on it. I think it just needs to be cleaned. So it's probably very dirty uh, looking at it right now and it's just kind of hazy. So probably it needs a, a good clean. I don't want to touch it because it's not mine. I got to send it back. So if um, they see it now, mind you too, I don't think that's too big of a deal because if you buy a brand new one, okay, and I'm sure they're not gonna sell it like that. So it was just, I, I think it's because this is the one that they send everybody to test. And it probably, uh, like for instance, it was missing one cap. 
Uh, there was a cap on all of them except for one. So maybe dust is getting in on it uh, fairly regular. And again, I don't want to clean this sucker because it's like $1,500 Canadian. I'll let them do that. But maybe when they get it, they should clean it before sending it to the next uh, YouTuber or tester type of thing. So overall, I think this is a kind of neat thing. It is a bit expensive. Now, I don't think I've ever owned, I don't think so. I could be wrong, but I don't think I've ever owned, not even an eyepiece uh, or an accessory that's quite this expensive. Uh, so I think I, I do like it. It's good to change uh, powers. You could parfocal if you want, but you do have to do the work at the beginning versus after each one. But maybe if you're high zoomed on a power, uh, but then again, I don't really mind focusing each one anyway, because it just takes a half a second. <clears throat> so it, it, in that respect, it's pretty good. Um, the mirror, I think, again, I'm going to say it's because it's a tester and it probably got dirty. I don't want to clean it because it's not mine uh, in case something. Now, there is one thing that um, I heard in other videos that if you have big, huge eyepieces, now it has to be the inch and a quarter, but there are some really big inch and a quarter eyepieces like the, the dual barrel inch and a quarter and two inch like i used to have the mead 14 millimeter ultra wide angle and that's a huge eyepiece uh the delios ones uh you know there are some big eyepieces that you you could have now if i seen if you put really six heavy eyepieces on here then i've seen on that video where the clicking uh it's just so loose it's just it doesn't hold it now in my case I'm not using huge eyepieces. I think I'm using decent eyepieces and even like a Nagler 11 type uh, six, but these are not huge. These are just your average good eyepieces, uh, medium weight. There, it is a, a bit a bit heavy when you have all six on here. But again, I did not find using regular inch and a quarter eyepieces that are not huge for the clicking stop works fine to me so i don't see any problem there i think most people that's been in the hobby uh, and you're going to spend this much probably has at least two sets so i would say don't use big esos or big ultra wides or uh you know super wides that uh, are like you know three pounds each because then it won't work so overall i think it's pretty good again little problem with the mirror but i'm thinking if you buy one they're going to send you a brand new one you're not going to get a tester and then you just clean it once in a while. Just have them all capped. Like I said, I I got this uh, tester here and, and one cap was missing. So it could have uh, led and who, mo who knows how many times it was uh, tested by people type of thing. And um, if one was always missing, you know, dust is getting in. But I'm pretty sure they're going to send you a mint condition uh, type of thing. Now, there is one thing that I think... I wish they would have done, and maybe if you watch this video, I think you should do, besides that cap, besides the mirror, because I'm assuming that's going to be brand new, is this housing here. I think you should have two. Uh, it should be like it. Most people in this hobby, most good telescopes, especially for a $1,500 Canadian accessory, is going to have a telescope that has a two-inch barrel. And I also think a two-inch barrel is going to hold it more steady than an inch and a quarter. Now, maybe you guys can work it out where it can have a dual, you can thread out, uh, take it out, put the screw on a two inch, uh, or the people that have inch and a quarter, uh, you know, have this one as well. So maybe two adapters, for, I think, but a two inch, I think it's gonna hold it a bit more steady. Besides that, everything else seems to be okay for me. That's it, Joe Jaguar, like, comment, and subscribe. I am now going to send get in contact with them, send them this back, and that's it. If you know anybody getting in the hobby, share my channel with them. If you know anybody on the forums that maybe wants to buy this and wants to know a little bit about it, send them my channel if you don't mind. I do have members video where I put videos up once a month, one video for the members only, the Patreon members that is, and that uh, those videos do not go on the public channel. And it's only 99 cents a month. So it's not a lot. I'm trying to keep it low. Uh, so if you guys want to see a video that's not on a regular uh, channel, 
uh, something just for you guys, well, you can subscribe to my Patreon members, 99 cents a month. Okay, guys, that's it. Why not you? Why not me? Thing that happened. As I was packing it to send it back to the uh, supplier, as I said in the video, there was one cap missing. I found that missing cap deep inside the box still with the bubble wraps and stuff like that. So that's another funny thing. I thought it was lost or I never got one, but it was in the box and I guess it fell all the way to the bottom. Who knew?